My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I help people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Sometimes, after an incredible run, you need to take something off the table. Even if every fiber of your being screams that you should be buying, not selling anything. After another strong day where the Dow gained 252 points, S&P advanced 0.59%, NASDAQ climbed 0.6%. I think this is one of those moments where you have to ring the register on something. Even though everybody else only wants to talk about buying everything. Don't get me wrong. I do like this market very much. You will hear from a bullish chartist later on, whom I agree with. I think lots of stocks are indeed headed higher. Many stocks that were previously left for dead look like that they can indeed roar. Bye, bye, bye. The truth is, we're in the sweet spot where the Fed may be done tightening and is even thinking of cutting rates. When that happens, you can't fight the friendly Fed. And you can't fight the tape. It's clear sailing for many stocks that might otherwise be getting hurt. Historically, this moment should be the best time to buy. But we own a lot of stocks from my Chapel Trust. We talked about them today at our club meeting where you can go and listen to the replay if you'd like. We own a lot of stocks. However, we are selling into the rally at this stage. Why? Because if you've been around, if you've invested for many years, you know that this is a terrific moment to sell something. We are way overbought, plus seven on the oscillator. We've had seven straight up weeks. So it feels aggressive to me to press your luck at this point. So what should you do? I think you should look at your portfolio, decide what's had a what we call a parabolic move, an insane rapid run higher, and then, yes, do some trimming. For example, we own Broadcom for the Chapel Trust. Whoa, what a stock. Great chip maker with a software kicker that recently acquired VMware, a major player in what's known as virtualization software, which is, which is what makes the cloud possible. We think it is a terrific combination, a mixture of hardware and software that deserves a much higher valuation than a standalone Broadcom. But in a week and a half, the stock rallied more than 20%. Parabola, people, parabola. So we sold some shares for the trust. It wasn't heresy. And we didn't sell the whole position because we like Broadcom too much. We just trimmed the position, which admittedly feels old-fashioned and old-school in a market that loves stocks that go up in a straight line where people just trace, chase them and chase them. This small sale evoked tremendous surprise from my walk on the street colleague, David Faber, when I mentioned this morning. So I thought we should talk about it. Why sell some Broadcom? Let me give you some rules and insights that I've gleaned from more than 40 years of managing money that propelled me to do so, even as maybe every one of them is wrong. I don't know. They've helped me before. First tenant, bulls make money. Bears make money. But hogs, they get slaughtered. Translation, it's okay to make a ton of money on the long side, same with the short side. But if you don't take something off the table when you got a big win, well, you're being a pig, and pigs are most likely going to get slaughtered. Now, there are many stocks where I am seeing some really piggish behavior. If you stuck with one, and this is really the ultimate case of it, if you stuck with a firm holding since the last quarter began, or more specifically when the buy now, pay later company announced an expanded relationship with Amazon, you've now made an astronomical amount of money. The stock jumped from 17 and change to 21 on the Amazon news, but then since it's rallied all the way to $50, including today's 15% move after Walmart expanded its relationship with the firm to include its self-checkout machines. I like a firm. The company. The buy now, pay later business got through a particularly difficult time when the Fed kept raising interest rates relentlessly. They did not have credit problems. Lots of people thought a firm would get crushed, and many still do. And that's why the shorts decided to gang up and try to crush it. 22% short interest as the bears never bothered to cover when the Fed pivoted. Those short sellers must be beside themselves. The short side got crowded. And that attracted buyers who smelled blood in the water the same way they found the next GameStop. Now the shorts are desperately trying to find stock to buy to close out their positions and save themselves from more pain. 
the house of pain. Especially now that the Fed's likely to cut interest rates next year. And that would be fantastic for a firm. But unfortunately, a firm stock is going, now going parabolic. On news that it isn't, it really isn't all that credible. Amazon likes their service or else they would be expanding it from individuals to businesses. Something that's happened when the run began. But I think businesses are a lot less likely to be enticed by the buy now, pay later formula. Walmart's move extending to buy now, pay later to self-checkout doesn't seem like all that big a deal either, since the firm was already available at Walmart. To me, this is a parabolic move brought on by contracts by, that simply aren't a big deal. If you own the stock, you should be selling some up here. Everything I've learned in more than 40 years in this business tells me it's time to take something off the table. But the bear hunters are back. <laughs> And they won't be happy until all the shorts are roadkill. Unfortunately, since GameStop went to $400, none of these buyers want to sell any stock. Doesn't matter that $400 is basically where GameStop peaked. The owners are being pigs for holding on to a firm betting on $400, betting on a parabolic move that's another 350 points to go. Why not sell some a firm and hunt for something else to buy among the down-and-out bank stocks that haven't moved yet? Or the credit card companies that could be the next big thing. Sadly, these buyers don't seem to care about value. They only want to crush the shorts. And they want to break the backs of them to take the stock up probably double where it is right now. It's the GameStop playbook, people. Let me tell you something else I've learned. It's almost impossible to call the top an individual stock. So what you need to do is sell your winners gradually on the way up. That way you won't get hurt too badly if we're at the peak. And you don't miss out on the uh, too much upside if we're not at the peak. But if you've got to sell something because moves like this run in a firm don't last forever, well, go do it. Of course, it can help running. Uh, it can help running, and the bulls will mock me for being too cautious. But if they never sell, eventually they're going to get burned. You don't have, to ha you don't have a profit, by the way, until you sell. And that's why you need to acknowledge that we're all fallible. We don't know when people will figure out that neither the Amazon nor Walmart deals are big for Amazon, but the buyers don't want to give up on a good thing. I say, how do we know whether this firm is worth $4, $40, or $400? Because we do not know. We can't possibly know. We accept our fallibility and we sell some stock when it's roaring. That's also what, why we only sell some, not the whole position. Because none of us are perfect, really, none of us are smart enough to nail the top perfectly. Sadly, these rules seem like something from a bygone era, don't they? How can you ever talk about selling, Jim, if you think it's going higher and we can crush the shorts and affirm? How are you so sure of the need to sell when you should be buying? I hear that, but I, I know that nobody ever got hurt taking a profit. On the other hand, I'd never forgive myself if we held on to some of these stocks for the Chapel Trust and it, they tanked and we had sold nary a share. Then again, I'm old school. I just never thought I went to no school or one giant unaccredited school of hard knocks. The degree is worthless right now. Sales become a dirty word, which is how you know the market's going crazy and how they're going to take a firm up gigantically. Bottom line, if you've got a huge game, I'm begging you to take off something. Just take it off the table a little bit, even as nobody wants to sell in this market because it's so hot. As for me, though, I'm not willing to watch my winners turn into losers, and you don't need to go all the way back to the dot-com era to see what happens when you don't sell. The same darn thing happened at the end of 2021, for heaven's sake. The Bears would, were, were praying, I would say, affirm next stop 100. I hope they don't hound me when I say take something off the table. But then again, I know they will. Tony in Florida, Tony. Hey, uh, Jim, I want to give you a big booyah for today's monthly meeting. It was great. Oh, thank you, Tony. I know people can go listen to, to the replay. Thank you so much for that. What's up? I really appreciate it. But the, what I'm calling about is one of the uh, stocks in the club. I don't have any consumer staple stocks at all. Is Procter Gamble a buy right now? Yes, that's percent? the one because they have a billion dollars in weak dollar. You know, the, the strong dollars crushed them. They lost a billion dollars on that. And they have the raw costs coming down, but they have not had the lowest, lower price because of their technology. Procter is the one you want. John in Illinois. John. How you doing? Not bad. How about you? I'm trying to get by. I'll tell you. I'm looking at a stock called ARM Holdings PLC. Yeah. What's your outlook for 2024? 
Okay, I think Rene Haas, the CEO, is tremendous. We said we liked the stock in the 50s. We said we liked it in the 60s. I'm not backing down. I think this stock can go to the 70s. Now, if you've got a huge gain, I am betting you to take something off the table, even as nobody wants to sell in a market that's this hot. And the affirm, short, the affirm busters think the shorts will have to cover at 100. On my money today, stocks ending the day higher once again with the Dow and Nasdaq hitting their ninth straight day of gains. Wow, but what are the charts signaling for the new year? I'm tackling the technicals. Then I'm sitting down with the CEO of Huntington Bank Shares to find out what the Fed's latest moves mean for the regionals. But first, by exclusive with an under the radar player aiming to disrupt legacy beauty brands, don't miss my sit down with Oddity Tech. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.